Good morning. I told you guys in uh, one of the previous videos that on the days I don't go out and get a lot of food, I'm usually home just uh, working out and eating sort of relatively healthy. So last few days, a lot of salads, a lot of grilled chicken. And I, I feel pretty good. I feel, I feel like I, I've done I've done good things to my body. So today I, I'm gonna go reward myself with some Japanese hapa katsu. And finally, I heard about this Michelin star Korean ramen restaurant that serves a wagyu ramen, just like what we're gonna do at our ramen place. So this is this is more this is more for research, but I think I will enjoy it just just a little bit. Then this is the last week I'm gonna be in New York. In a few days I'm flying to Seattle, packing up all my stuff, then driving to Texas. So I won't be back here for a while. So this will be kind of like a New York send off meal for me. Anyway, before we go, gotta get some food for the road. Got my hot pot and two new flavors of Magic Spoon Cereal. Who, of course, is the sponsor of this video. And the two new flavors are maple waffle and cookies and cookies and cream. This maple thing, as soon as I opened it, smells like syrup and pancakes in Canada. This might be my favorite flavor so far. Actually, it is now my favorite flavor. Oh, and by the way, those who mock me for using a hot pot, pot to eat breakfast cereal and a Chinese soup spoon, you just don't know what you're missing. This is the best spoon ever created for anything liquid. Also, when I was a kid, I don't know how many of you guys ever did this. I used to scoop up soup and, and drink it like this. <laughs> Cookies and cream is good too. Anyway, I've been telling you guys, cereal has been one of my biggest weaknesses in the food world. If I see it on a buffet, I have to get it. And I'm older now, so it's definitely hurting me. And that's where this came in. I was actually looking for a cereal that's kind of high in protein, low in sugar and all this stuff. So I gave this a try, loved it. It satisfies my cereal craving. And it's got zero grams of sugar, four grams of net carbs, and only 140 calories per serving. It's gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low carb, which is what I've been trying to do. So you guys see, I actually lost a little weight. I don't know if you noticed at all. It's GMO free, also it's keto friendly. They got some amazing flavors like the original cocoa fruity, frosty, and blueberry. And of course the new flavors, the maple and cookies and cream. So basically healthy and yummy. Anyway, if you guys wanna give this a try and get your hands on these awesome flavors, use my link down below in my promo code, the dumpling, and you'll get $5 off. Or you can choose to build your own box, whatever you wanna do. Also, what I love about this company is that if you're not happy with this for whatever reason, they have a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't love it, get your money back. So go to my link down below or just go to magicspoon.com slash dumpling and they now ship to Canada. I always gotta use some food before I leave because it's about a two hour drive. I mean, nobody should do that on an empty stomach. So I'm gonna eat this and the new drama I'm watching is Run On. I'm on episode one and so far pretty good. Like the leads. All right, I'll see you at Hot Pot. So most of the food I'm eating today is all gonna be in this area, the same March Lower East Side area. There's actually a lot of new Japanese places and Chinese places that start popping up in the last few years. And there's this Japanese hot pot place I've been dying to try. Right there. Actually, I'm here a little early. Can't ever trust Yelp to have the right opening time. So I got about 30 minutes to kill. I saw a dumpling shop across the street, but not the dumplings I typically eat. Hey, you guys got pierogies here. Yes, we do. Well, which one's the best? Can I get some good ones? Potatoes are the classic one. Uh huh. Short ribs. Short ribs. For sure, yeah. I've been meaning to go to the Brighton Beach section, which is an area in Brooklyn, just full of Eastern European, Russian food. But I heard good things about this place. So get some pierogies and then we'll go get some hot pot. Thank you. This is cozy. I really like this. I wish all businesses had something like this. I know indoor dining is opening now, but for me, I'm still nervous as heck to go anywhere. This just makes me feel so much better. This place is known for their nabe set, and I'm definitely here for the matsunabe, the intestines, the beef intestines hot pot. I know some of you guys don't eat innards, you don't eat intestines, but I encourage you to give this a try. 
This is one of the best things I had in Japan. So hopefully it's just as good here. They also have a gyodo. There's certain things my body just craves, like dumplings, hot pot, noodles, pho, Korean barbecue, and gyodo. I can't pass that up. Got my Matsunabe pot. So what's inside is delicious broth with a layer of chives, chilies, garlic, sesame on top, tofu, and the white stuff, that's the beef intestines. And this is what I see in my dreams. I had this when I first was in uh, Fukuoka, and it's the specialty of Fukuoka, Japan. I didn't know it was a specialty, and I was like, well, beef intestines, how good could that be? So good. And of course, this is gonna cook down because all the chives are in here. Oh, also, can't forget about the nabe. This is why this is called Matsunabe. So you got a ton of that sitting on the bottom as well. I'm gonna put the pork belly in here as well to get that boiling. It's always nice to have some of that fat from the pork belly in your broth as well. This is the pierogies. So pierogies aren't cheap, like <laughs> not like Chinese dumplings. These things are like $2 a piece. Anyway, this is the short rib pierogi. And that is tender with the caramelized onions. And they also give you sour cream and applesauce to dip it in. Right, just to pause on the dumpling thing, because the soup just finished and I need to, have to take a sip right away. Oh, it's so good. Well, you can take a bite of food and it just makes you beam. Like you just saw the love of your life. You know that's something good. Light but magnificent beefy flavor. And chive is so great because it gives you that great garlicky taste. This is the intestines. And beef intestines is really fatty, but it's also got a nice chew to it. So one side, really fatty, melts in your mouth. The other side, nice chew, kind of like a tripe. Texture, flavor. And the flavor, if they cook it well, there's nothing, zero gaminess to it. There's nothing kind of smelly, you know, sometimes intestines could come off a little smelly. There's nothing smelly about it. It's just good. And I really love it because of its fatty texture. So this thing, whether it's in a hot pot or grilled, it's just the ultimate ingredient. In places like this, they're gonna refill your soup for sure. So make sure to drink a lot of this because that is such good stuff. There's also some dipping sauce that comes with it. So these are some chilies with cilantro. Then you have garlic and this should be some sort of yuzu paste. Yep, oh, that's great. I'm gonna ask for extra ones of these. So yuzu chilies are so good when you combine it with this hot pot. So you can eat it with the meat. Mm. Oh, remarkable. Or what I like to do, I like to kind of put it in my broth a little bit. You can also dip this, this chilies here. Mm. This is the best. They put yuzu in here as well. Yuzu and chip. Oh, here we go. <laughs> My gildon's here. Yeah, there's there's a poached egg and I, I, I gotta poke it right now. Wow. Thin slices of fatty beef. And this one, I can tell already. Oh, look at this. Oh, I've never seen gildon like this before. Look how soupy it is. Usually it's not soupy at all. Usually it's just the sauce that'll cover the rice. This is like almost congee. Never seen anything like that before. I'm getting a little distracted from my dumplings, my hot pot, and, and the uh, and the gildon. So take another pierogi. I'm gonna do this one with some applesauce and sour cream. It definitely tastes like fancier than like a regular Chinese dumpling because of that short rib. They do actually put a lot of short rib in here. This is delicious. If you're used to the Chinese dumplings where you can get like three for a dollar or four for a dollar, this is a bit more expensive than that. Delicious though. So I got the potato one. This is a very classic flavor, traditional pierogi. Tastes like mashed potatoes in some sort of herb in here. Like I think it's dill. Ooh. 
who knew dumplings would be so good with applesauce? Let's try this soupy gill dunk. Oh, so good. This place is something special. I mean, price-wise, the gyodong costs the same as the uh, hot pot. I would definitely recommend going for the hot pot if you come here, but this is delicious. Mm. It is sort of like beef congee. And it's pretty good with the hot pot seasoning too. The broth flavor, of course, steeped into all the vegetables, all the meat. And because this is relatively fatty, the yuzu just does so much to keep this whole thing refreshingly interesting. Also, besides the beef flavor, the broth, you can definitely tell it's pork broth. It's so creamy and smooth. There's so much flavor in here. So you're getting beef, you get that great flavor from the pork bone, garlic, yuzu, there's so much going on here. Flavor is so deep, but it's not overly rich or thick. Also, you can make this into a ramen. And put a dumpling in here. Why not? It's a hot pot, it needs a dumpling. Every great hot pot with good broth, deserve some noodles to just soak it all up. Ah, oh, so good. You could dip Freddy Krueger in this thing. It'll come out as Snow White. Anything that goes in here automatically gets better. It's like 40 degrees outside. I'm in a light jacket. I'm sweating. All right, I'll see you after breakfast. Oh. I guess Predator's Planet also has COVID. This place I'm at is called Suki. Apparently the katsu here is supposed to be amazing. And I've been looking for like a really good katsu place for a long, long time. So I think a pork katsu curry sounds just tremendous. Pork katsu and a matcha tea? Uh, yes. Five is the spiciest? Yeah. Give me five. Also this place, decor is really nice, simple, but also traditional and all the seats kind of separated by, by these screens. I like sitting here. Plus I, I appreciate it keeping the door open so there's nice airflow as well. So I feel pretty good about it. My food is here along with the warning that level five is indeed really spicy. Let's see. Spicy yet satisfying. Beautiful fried golden crispy shell. Nice and juicy glistening meat on the inside. Mm. First of all, love everything on my plate. Level five spice, I think for me it's pretty perfect. I think the best thing about this is how well fried the outside of the katsu is. Listen to this. I don't have a mic on right now, so maybe you can't hear that subtle crunch when I fit through this cutlet, but it is subtle and it is wonderful. It's the lightest crispy shell on the outside covering that deliciously juicy, bouncy cut of pork. And even the burn burns in such a nice way. And the sauce is a nice tomato-based curry sauce, which highlights but doesn't overpower the nice flavor of the pork. And honestly, cabbage is something that's really necessary when you're eating katsu because it just completely refreshes your palate. And I like the sesame dressing on this as well. This is the best piece, listen to this. Also, don't be afraid of level five. I mean, it's, it's pretty spicy. Like most people will probably would not be able to handle this, but if you really like your spice, you'll love this. All right, just as I was finishing the other amazing katsu, I was just doing what I typically do during a meal, you know, searching for what I want to eat next. And I found this other katsu place as a pop-up, and they're doing a katsu sandwich. I would like a katsu sandwich. Oh, here it is. The name kind of caught my attention because... Evil katsu. Howdy. Hey, the entrance you, you use is on the side here. Are you the evil katsu guy? I'm part of it. 
All right, are you guys really evil? Uh, in some regards. I hope you are. I've seen many katsu sandwiches in my day, of course, but like, <laughs> look at this behemoth. What? I'm kind of confused, like, it's big, it's just, you know, monstrous in one aspect of its, its beauty, what that I love, but, but also there's, there's like delicate care where the crust is cut off. It seems both aggressive and, and, and very gentle at the same time. Oh, that is a hefty sandwich. Different colors, you got beautiful orange, carrots, golden brown, fried to perfection, katsu, and purple cabbage on the bottom. Let's give it a try. I love everything there is to love about this. Mm. I've been watching a lot of Food Wars, so I've half, I was half, like half expecting my jacket to just like fly off somewhere and just my shirt to shatter. The cold veggie is good, bread is good. Juicy pork with a perfect crunchy outer shell. The use of veggies are fantastic as well to bring that kind of refreshing flavor. Oh, dill on the pickled vegetables is actually really nice. This whole thing, like I just said, it's aggressive and gentle at the same time. There's so many textures, so much flavors. The light crunchy outer shell in the katsu. You know, the delicious juicy meat in the middle. There's so much of it. I'm seeing that in a, the best way possible. I, I love it when I can get so much of it. Also, what's great about this is when eating a big piece of fried pork, it's not overly greasy. It's not overly anything. Immensely satisfying. I mean, it just took like a traditional katsu sandwich and it godzilla iced it, if that's a word. Come try this. That, not an exaggeration. That was a great sandwich, so good job, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you. They're here for two more weeks uh, and then they can check out where you guys are on Instagram or something? Yeah, for sure. Okay, all right, follow them. Get a sandwich. I'm actually a little worried right now. I didn't expect that sandwich to be so big and, oh, I can't believe I ate all that. I mean, I believe it, but for some reason, I just don't really feel it in my stomach. Like, I'm good. Anyway, I'm gonna go take a break and then uh, meeting my friend Ben for dinner. I haven't seen him in, uh, I think, a year. I think the last time I saw him, COVID hasn't happened yet. One last place for food today, and that brings me back to the West Village here in New York City. One of my favorite places to eat and walk around. I mean, there's so many little boutique shops and also tons of great food places. When I used to live in a city, I used to come here about once or twice a week. There's amazing pizza, there's great Indian food, there's some good Vietnamese places. This cookie place. Found this little enclosure to eat my cookies. Look at this big old thick cookie. Warm and toasty. So soft. Ah, ah, ah. Inside is the cheesecake. Oh, oh, and the blueberry. Uh -huh. Do yourselves a favor and get yourself one of these cookies. Blueberries with just a load of sweet cheesecake filling. I do like these better than Levine's. And I love Levine's. So the next place I'm going to, um, the reason I'm not there yet is because it opens at like 5 o'clock. So in about 45 minutes. So I'm just walking around eating random stuff until that happens. And it's a noodle shop. And it's the first and only one Michelin star noodle shop in the country. I'm of course hoping that after our noodle shop opens, we'll be the second one to get a Michelin star. But uh, I've never been there before. I really want to try it out. It's called Jeju Noodle Bar. So it's a Korean ramen shop. Her really, really, really good things. And you know how I showed you guys like our ramen tasting menu? There was a Wagyu smoked Wagyu chashu ramen. Well, they got a Wagyu ramen as well. So we'll see how it stacks up against ours. Oh, that cookie is so good. I'm going to go grab one for Ben. I'm going to be a little evil because... I know Ben's weakness is cookies, so I'm gonna see if he can resist this one. What's up, buddy? What's up, hey? How, How are you doing? You? Good, man. You ready for some food? I haven't seen you in a while. I know. So this is a pretty fancy uh, ramen place, obviously because it has a Michelin star. So definitely getting the Wagyu ramen. So it's a rich veal bone broth, raw Miyazaki Wagyu brisket. Okay, I brought you a cookie. Thanks, Yo, bro. you need to try this cookie right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank you. I know you have a weakness for cookies. Oh, man. <laughs> you know I love cookies. You know I got a stash of cookies at home. I know you do. Costco stash. Try, try, try <laughs> this cookie. No. Mm. Oh, good. It's got, it's got cheesecake inside the cookie. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to break it open. That's good cookie, right? That's good cookie. So we got three noodles to share uh, between me and Ben. And this one that just came is the family ramen. This is the one that I got beside the ragu. Jalapeno, some peanuts, looks like some chilies, shrimp, 
squid and char siu on the bottom of that. And they said to mix the chilies well. And this is sitting on a, ooh, look at this beautifully creamy pork broth. Whoa, 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 this is not char siu. This is porchetta. Look at this. And the noodles, oh, curly, medium-sized yellow noodles. Oh, this is good. Oh, that is creamy. I love it. Yeah, this is my favorite. If I, this is your favorite? Take one home, like, or, or have one for dinner, it's, it's this. Good, recommend. This is, the broth is so creamy and nice. It's smooth, silk, man. Yeah. It's like tasting Broadway. It's a, it's Silky a, it's smooth. A, it's a, it's a three-day broth. So, uh, mm. a lot of time, a lot of love, a lot of cartilage. So, mm. I like it. Three days. Oh, that is just... Silky smooth. That tastes like how Brad Pitt hits on women. Pure smooth. Brad Pitt? I don't know. He doesn't need to hit on women. Oh. Mm. That's how you hit on women. Mm. Oh, noodles are perfect. Perfect shoe. The chilies is magical because it's super rich. So it needs some of that acid to cut through that richness. And that 100% did it. I mean, it's definitely not the cheapest bowl of ramen you'll, you'll find, but that's delicious. Let's see what Ben thinks. What do you think, buddy? Good stuff, man. Yeah? Delicious. Very smooth and rich. It's smooth, Just right? Like you said, yeah. Is that one of the better bowls in ramen you've had? Oh, absolutely. No doubt about it. That's Ben's feedback. <laughs> we're we're going to call that... <laughs> we're going to call that Ben's segment. You definitely taste the uh, Michelin quality in this bowl of ramen. You like that? Dimensions? Quality. What would you say? Dimensions? Dimensions. That's good, Ben. Dimensions. Yeah. A lot of taste dimensions. Yeah, there you go. Ben, Ben's uh, complimenting the, the ramen. It's, it has got many dimensions, he says. This is the Wagyu ramen. This looks tremendous. So, veal broth with thin layer of Miyazaki Wagyu on top. Okay, some cabbage and sesame. Medium-sized noodles on the bottom, just like the last time. What do you think, buddy? Mmm. Yeah? It's good. Yeah. There's many dimensions. Last time was dimensions. Last, last time, this is, this is plural dimensions. dimensions. Multiple dimensions. Multiple dimensions in this one. You know, first thing that pop into my mouth or to my head when I taste this? Aged beef. Yeah. It tastes like aged beef. I think so. Yeah. Maybe it's the broth? Wow, it's really beefy, like extra beefy. I feel like this is richer than our last bowl. I mean, this thing you can almost chew the broth. It's so thick. I mean, this thing is all really so beef focused. Like it's just so incredibly beefy, almost to the point where um, I feel like right now I need some pickled vegetables or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It needs some sort of acid. It's getting a really, really rich. Like the Wagyu itself, it just melts when it touches your tongue. And that's, of course, fantastic. And the whole bowl just gives off this kind of like buttery presence. What is kind of interesting, I think the veggies are pickled. Taste that bad? Yeah. It's pickled vegetables. Thank oh, you. yeah, yeah. So that's what they're using to kind of counteract. It. Yeah. I wouldn't even call this a broth. I was, I was, I was, I would almost call this sauce. It's so thick. Yeah, it's really thick. Good. Every time I, I taste a sip of broth, like I feel like I put on a new layer of chapstick. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's thick. <laughs> it's just like you can taste the gelatinous, and also it gives off a really nice scallion flavor because I think that's what the drops of oil is. Overall, I feel like this is a really good bowl of ramen to like eat every once in a while. I don't think I could have this like every week. I think, honestly, I prefer the last one better. What it's do you look, think? I like this one. This is good, but maybe not as much. You know, this is like very rich, like butter. This is just me. I mean, I don't, I'm just saying. I think the last one exemplifies like the Michelin star quality more. This one, it's, you know, the price, it's justifying the price. I get it. There's a lot of wagyu in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the last one, it was just like very, I feel like there was a lot of thought that went to it. I had to get some tea because even after eating the noodles, like five minutes, 10 minutes after, I still feel how gelatinous it is. 
do not drink cold. If you come here and get something like this where at any point you're eating something really greasy, do not drink cold water. All right, it's gonna be really bad for your stomach. Drink hot tea. This is the Jiajiang rack of lamb. So Jiajiang is fermented bean sauce that usually you make noodles with and they put it onto this lamb. I'm kind of conflicted. Mm. Mm. The fatty part's really good. Cool. You like that, buddy? I like that. How many dimensions do you give this? I like that. That's a bunch of dimensions right there. That's a bunch of dimensions? That's a bunch of dimensions. Okay. Actually, just one really good dimension. Okay. The Jajang sauce gave it a nice earthy flavor. I'm kind of hesitant because I took a bite of like this part. And it was kind of not as juicy as obviously the fatty parts. Mmm. Oh, the sesame sauce is great. A little char and just pure juicy meat. No gaminess to this either. For summary, definitely would recommend the family noodles. If you really want to try the Wagyu one, go for it. But I think the family noodles can be the best one. But overall, pretty solid. Congratulations on your one star. Hopefully when our ramen shops open up. So we can have like two one Michelin star noodle restaurants in New York City. That's my dream. Anyway, gonna get back to my rack of lamb. Thank you guys so much for watching. Ben, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Later. Thanks for uh, eating with us. There you go. You heard it from the man. Thanks for eating with us. Just got home. I get a lot of comments and messages asking me because I do tend to eat a lot. What do I do to, to you know, offset the, the food day? So I don't do this every single day. I don't go out every single day and eat like five meals like I did today. Right away when I'm home, I have to work out. And today is my cardio day. So I'm about to go do an hour of cardio. So what I would typically do is I have a roll machine, which I'll do 30 minutes. And I like doing this because then I can watch K-dramas as I'm doing it. After that, I'll do a half an hour run and then my favorite workout. I have the Quest and there's a game called Thrill of the Fight. If you know, you know, like it's, a boxing game. If you play about two to three minutes, you start sweating already. So I fight like maybe six, seven opponents and I'm like just covered in sweat. So after that, I'll feel pretty good about everything I just say. Well, I never really feel good about that, but you know, able to burn some off. So what I do eat on days when I'm not filming, I'll do a light salad with carrots and I made my own tea eggs. So if you guys want a great tea egg recipe, I have one, it's fantastic tea eggs. And for some of the meals, I will do almond milk or almond and coconut milk. And I'll have some magic spoon cereal. And when I'm eating the salad, I'll pair that up with, you know, a piece of steak, some protein. And for some good fat, I use some almonds or cashews. I lay off the carbs. Also, I do, I do uh, intermittent fasting. So I usually eat twice a day and I won't eat past six. So usually my first meal is at around 11 and my second meal is around five. So those are the things that's worked pretty well for me to keep me relatively non-sumo. And then on my non-cardio days, I do pull-ups, push-ups. I got a bench with some free weights. So I, I, I really do enjoy working out. As you can see, I... I'm okay, even though I, I do binge like this, uh, maybe a couple times a week, I'm able to keep it off with what I do. Of course, what I do may not be what you need to do. So everyone is different. So don't just control C, whatever it is I do. And I've showed you guys how I do workouts before. I just never told you guys a lot in detail about, I guess my, my eating habits outside of when I'm filming. And of course, that's just when I'm in New York. So when I'm in Seattle, it's different. When I'm gonna be in Texas, it's gonna be different, I'm sure. And when I'm traveling to other countries, it's completely different because then, I mean, I have access to gyms or weights or whatever. So the key for me is always just don't go hard all the time. I'll have really awesome eating days, but I'm not always eating like that. So I know there's a lot of concern from you guys every time. Make sure you're watching your health and I appreciate that. And I am doing as much as I can to kind of be as healthy as I can. So I do eat a lot of spinach and I feel like my, my arms are kind of Popeye-ish. All right, Slay, I, I gotta get a workout and go to bed. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you later.